Hi and welcome to this video looking at Hess's law. Hess's law states that the enthalpy change for a reaction depends only on the enthalpies of the reactants and the products and not the route that is taken. So for a reaction which might not actually happen in reality, we can have a look at reactions that do happen, look at their enthalpies and we'll be able to calculate the overall enthalpy change for the reaction that we wanted to look at. For example, if we were going to have a look at a reaction which went from A to B, this would be enthalpy change number one. And if we imagine we can't work out this enthalpy change, we could turn A into C with an enthalpy change of delta H2. We could then turn C into D with an enthalpy change of delta H3. And then finally change D into B, so the end where we want it to be. This means, using Hess's law, that the enthalpy change going from A to B should be equal to each of the intermediate enthalpy, enthalpy changes. So delta H2 plus delta H3 plus delta H4. We're going to use this today to calculate some enthalpy changes. The first one that we're looking at here is the enthalpy of formation for methane. So the enthalpy of formation is always the enthalpy change associated with making one mole of a substance from its elements in standard states. This isn't always actually possible. So here we have our enthalpy change delta H going from carbon solid plus hydrogen gas to give us methane as a gas. What we can do with Hess's law is we can take each of our individual reactants and products and write a combustion equation for them. Combustion reactions do happen and we can measure their enthalpy changes as we've looked at previously. So for the first one, the combustion equation for carbon is where we completely combust one mole of carbon in oxygen to give us carbon dioxide. And the enthalpy change associated with that is delta H1 and is minus 394 kilojoules. Per mole. You can find the en these enthalpy changes on page 10 of your data book. They're up at the top and they're called, they're called enthalpy of combustion. We well, can write the enthalpy of combustion for hydrogen, which is one mole of hydrogen plus half a mole of oxygen to give us one mole of water, and that has an enthalpy change of minus 286. And then finally, the enthalpy of combustion for methane is one mole of methane plus two moles of oxygen to give us carbon dioxide and water with a delta H of minus 891. The method that we're going to look at here is just inspecting these equations and matching them up to this one here to see what we need. So if we have a look at the carbon in the equation, we've only got one carbon, so we can just leave this equation as it is. So we just need one times this equation. If we look at hydrogen, however, we have two hydrogens, whereas here we've only got one. So we need to multiply this entire equation by two. So we'd have two here, this would become one, and we would have two here. We would then multiply this number by two also. And then finally, the methane. So methane here is on the right hand side of the arrow, whereas here, it's on the left, so we need to multiply this one by minus 1 to flip it over. Then all we need to do is to add up the three enthalpy changes that we have. So that means that delta H, our overall enthalpy change, will be equal to delta H1, and we're just having one of those, plus 2 delta H2s, minus delta H3 because we wanted to flip over. Now if you were to draw out these equations you would find that the elements would start to cancel each other out. So if we have, we've got carbon here, we've got the two hydrogens, so that's what we were wanting. The methane will now be on the other side. So that means that the carbon dioxide that is here would cancel with this carbon dioxide. We have two waters here they'll be on this side, so they would cancel with these waters. And then we would have two oxygens here, which would then cancel with these oxygens, leaving behind the species that you're interested in. So if we were to put in the numbers into our equation, we're going to have negative 394 
plus 2 times negative 286 minus negative 891. If you put this into your calculator and add them all up, then you'll find that you have an overall enthalpy change of minus 75 kilojoules per mole. So if we have a look at a second example, here we have another enthalpy of formation, this time for ethanoic acid. And we're going to have a look at each of the equations in turn. So the first one that we have is carbon. And this is a combustion equation for carbon. We need to have two carbon atoms, so we need to multiply this equation by two. Here we have hydrogen. Again, we need to have two hydrogen molecules, so we need to multiply that equation by two also. And then our final equation is for the ethanoic acid, which is on the wrong side, so that one would be multiplied by minus one to flip it over. You would find that if you went through this and drew out the equations, then the oxygen that we need here would come out through the balancing of the numbers. So carrying out the sum, we're going to have delta H equals 2 delta H1 plus 2 delta H2 minus delta H3. So putting those numbers in, we're going to have 2 times negative 394 plus 2 times negative 286 minus negative 876. That gives you an enthalpy change of minus 484 kilojoules per mole. Here are three examples for you to try. Remember to write out the combustion equations for each of the species, ignoring any oxygen, and then find the values in page 10 of the databook to allow you to do the calculation. So for this calculation here, we need to write out the combustion equations first. So we'll have carbon plus oxygen to give you carbon dioxide. And that will be delta H1. And that's minus 394. We'll then have hydrogen plus a half oxygen to give us water. And that'll be our delta H2 at negative 286. And then butane plus oxygen to give you carbon dioxide and water and that has a delta H 3 of negative 200 and 2878 so for the first equation we have got four carbons here but only one here so this one needs to be multiplied by four. For the second equation we have five hydrogens but only one here so we multiply this one by five and then for the last equation CH4 is on the wrong side so this one gets multiplied by negative one. So that gives you an overall Hess's law calculation of delta H equals four times delta H1 plus 5 times delta H2 minus delta H3. So using the values from the data book, we'll have 4 times negative 394 plus 5 times negative 286 minus negative 2878 to give you an overall enthalpy change for this reaction of negative 128 kilojoules per mole. Looking at this second equation, 
Again, we need to write out the combustion equations. So we'll have carbon plus oxygen to give carbon dioxide as delta H1 at negative 394. We'll have hydrogen plus oxygen to give water as delta H2 at negative 286. And finally, ethanol plus oxygen to give you carbon dioxide and water. And that'll be delta H3, the value of negative 1367. So looking at each of the equations in turn, here we have 2C, we've only got 1 here, so the first enthalpy change needs to be multiplied by 2. We need 3 hydrogens where we've only got 1, so we'll multiply that one by 3. And then finally, ethanol is on the wrong side, so we're going to multiply that one by negative 1. So our overall equation, we have delta H equals 2 delta H1 plus 3 delta H2 minus delta H3. So we're going to have 2 times negative 394 plus 3 times negative 286 minus negative 100, 1367. So that gives a total enthalpy change of negative 279 kilojoules per mole. And here's the final equation. So we're taking carbon plus oxygen to give carbon dioxide as our first enthalpy change. Hydrogen plus a half oxygen to give water as the second enthalpy change. And then finally we're looking at benzene, which is C6H6, plus seven and a half oxygen to give carbon dioxide and water. And that's delta H3 with a value of negative 3,628. So for carbon, we need 6. For hydrogen, we need 3. And benzene is on the wrong side, so we just need to flip it over. And then, as we've been doing before, just write out the equation first and then put the numbers in. And calculating that out gives you a total value of 406 kilojoules per mole. Thank you for watching this video on Hess's Law. I hope that you find it helpful. Please remember to subscribe or follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos.